shall be one flesh. And the first test to see if you're really about kingdom business, if you really are a king, is do you rule your home? Not saying, men, do you lord over your home? Or are you that first example? Are you leading your family into the greater of things of God? Do your family wish uh, witness you praying? Do they witness you in the word, seeking his face? Not just when it's time to preach, but do they see you seeking his face on a consistent basis? Do they see you leave from the church house, walk to your house, and everywhere else that you go, do they see you living holy? Are you that living example in your home? Can you make your marriage work? In the kingdom, if you're really a kingdom citizen of the kingdom of God, your first priority is to make that work. Now, I ain't kicking nobody that's been divorced. I've been divorced myself. But shame on me if I'm divorced again. Because God has given me too much teaching through this word of God. Too much teaching through this ministry. It's too much marriage counseling that goes through forth on this uh, sacred desk on a Sunday and Wednesday basis. Yes. By weekly we get it. Yes. He can come and say, I'm teaching on repentance. But you best believe there's going to be some teaching on marriage. Yes. How to keep your home together. Yes. So can you keep your home together? One of the things that... Uh, when I went through divorce, it, this is one that we all always hear about all the wisdom, all the knowledge that we get from a man of God. But this seed came from a woman of God. And she wasn't talking directly to me, but she really was. She said, one thing that hurts me is to see somebody get delivered out of a situation, a bad situation. It was in a bad predicament to get out of that situation and go and pick the same type and get right back in that situation all over again. A man of God say it like this. It's the same thing as changing cars. I'm through with this one. Hop in this one. Same make, same model. Different year. Same problem. We hop right into it. Instead of allowing God to work on us first. To deliver us first. Because it ain't always the other person's fault. You had something to do with it too. So we have to come into the knowledge of what we did and what we did now and make a vow to our Lord that if you ever bless me again, I'll never do it again. And beg my points, torture to my head and not to my heart. I forgot to acknowledge my wife, my queen. She's the love of my life. I told you I've been divorced, but look what the Lord has done. Amen. We have a great house. Amen. Unity. One accord. Yes. No division. Kids can't get between us. Relatives can't get, get between us. The scripture said, leave thy father and mother. So mom and daddy can't get in the business of where because this house is being read according to the word of God. Yes. Can you exemplify oneness in your home? The second is, can you exemplify oneness in the church, in the body of Christ? Turn your Bibles, if you would, to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. If Bishop is in town or if he's out of town. We're still in one mindset, pushing one vision, serving one true and living God. Bishop ain't your God. He's your man of God that God uses to speak to you. And God uses everybody that he stand up here before this sacred desk to speak right to you. So if Bishop is not here, that's not your excuse to not show up at church. That's a spirit that is not a part of this church. That's a spirit from another church. When the pastor go out of town, all the flock gone visited. You're on your way out the door. You've been tricked. You've been hoodwinked. You've been bamboozled. You've been tricked by the trickster. The enemy is slicker than you. He's smarter than you. He's more subtle than you. And he can get you out of this ministry by any way it's necessary. He's going to do it. If it's that Coke bottle figure, he's going to do it. If it's that man with the biceps and the pet, he's going to do it. He don't want you sitting up under this power. He don't want you sitting up under this anointing. And the quickest way that he 
can do that is to silence the voice of the one that is coming across this sacred desk. Ah, uh, he preached about something today. What, you didn't take notes? You on your way out the door. Ah, uh, he preached that again. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to open up your ears and hear something. Instead of being like those that are reading the Bible forever, hearing it, hear it. They hear it with the physical ears, but it ain't taking seed in their heart. We must establish oneness right here in the church. Amen. I'm going to go to this next one, uh, but I'm about to ready to jump right into it. But I'm going to let the scripture be read. So you can say it ain't just me up here philosophy, giving a kicking philosophy and kicking knowledge. It's found in Philippians 1 and 27. And together for the faith of the gospel. Amen. Amen. It goes along with what I was just saying. That it's rather you in our presence or outside of our presence. Your walk must be consistent. Conversation means your walk, your talk must be consistent. You must not leave out of the sanctuary and begin to gossip about any and everybody, especially right here in the church. Amen. Amen. If somebody comes to you with garbage, talking about somebody that's a member of your church, your job is to shut them down. Amen. Amen. Shut them down. Shut them down. Yeah, shut them down. You got to shut them down. We don't play that up in that. They must see the unity. They must experience the one accordance. When we go out of town, we went out to the, um, what was it called? The men's, the men's um, manpower. We went to manpower. It was about 10 or 11 of us. But you would have thought it was an army. Why? Because we was one, on one accord. Brother Ed had a problem with um, getting a seat in a handicapped section because folks that weren't handicapped were sitting there. You should have seen how the usher couldn't handle the problem. You should have seen how we swooped around. All of a sudden, you got 10 big Negroes looking at you like, what's the problem? <laughs> Folks got moved. Ed got a seat. Yay! Amen? The power of one. <laughs> Everywhere you go around, you see us in our, in our TRC gear. You see us G'd up. You see us together. You see us linked together. Ain't nobody coming to mess for TRC because we represent oneness. Amen? But it's even more powerful when you ain't grouped together. When you leave and you go home and ain't nothing but you, nobody but you. Ain't nobody there to watch over you. Ain't nobody over there to hold you accountable. Can you still show that you got one mind and that one mind set, is set on glorifying God? We can do it in your private time. Hey Amen. At home, I ain't held a house to myself. I'm just playing old high. Matter of fact, they call me poop. Stuff like a mug. I'm all like I'm a grown man. They still call me poop. <laughs> it's all right. It don't even matter. I mess around and name my son Poop. Poop Jr. Here you go. Yeah, I've been wondering where he get PJ out of Sylvester Hine. That's where it comes from. But God done a great work on Poop because Pookie was a mess. <laughs> I wouldn't do Jack City Pookie, but I was pretty bad off. Amen, amen. I, I ain't hit the rock, but I hit the liquor store consistently. Hey, my niece and them used to be on the church van riding by the liquor store. I'd be, hey! <laughs> Just left church. Shame on me, shame on me. But thanks be to God, for he is the Savior of God. He is the liberator of God. I go right past that same liquor store. Don't even have the thought. Don't even have the urge. Don't even have the taste because I'm in our church, that one is in our daily living, that everywhere we go, people see the kingdom of God at, at hand. They see the kingdom of God at work. What an impact will we make on the kingdom of hell and the impact that we will make for the kingdom of heaven? Amen? Amen. 